Last time we were gathered here on Tuesday, it was uh, to talk about uh, the response to uh, the Virginia earthquake. We are here again uh, today, and I want to thank you for spreading the word about uh, emergency preparedness and our response uh, to the people of Baltimore. I certainly couldn't do it without all of your assistance, so I'm uh, very grateful. Today I'm here to announce that Baltimore City is prepared for this weekend's hurricane. I just got off of a conference call with President Obama. He and DHS uh, Secretary Napolitano assured me and the other East Coast elected officials that the federal government stands ready to assist us uh, as we respond and recover from the hurricane. I'm very grateful for uh, the President's leadership at this time. Uh, he made it clear uh, that uh, the federal government was uh, ready to be a partner, whatever we needed and that the lines of communication are open. Standing with me today are the leaders from our agencies that are responsible for keeping our city safe this weekend. Uh, throughout the year, each of the agencies work hard to improve their response to emergency situations. We conduct training exercises as an important aspect of our emergency preparedness uh, planning. These exercises enhance the effectiveness of our operations, and it is my pleasure to announce that Baltimore City is ready. But we also need citizens to be prepared as well. Uh, things that you may think of, some things you might not think of, we need you to be prepared. Uh, the forecasts predict heavy rain, um, heavy wind and rain uh, over the next two days. But before the first rain drop falls, we need you to get ready. Uh, make sure you have canned food uh, and a can opener and bottled water uh, for at least two days. We need you to make sure that you have batteries and flashlights, AMF and AM, FM radio to make sure that you can stay safe and informed in case of a loss of power. Uh, stay tuned to local television and radio stations and listen for instructions uh, from city officials. We will be sending out uh, text messages uh, through our, our government uh, system to make sure that we're, we're pushing out the information that you need to say, uh, stay safe. Uh, make sure that you have a personal family plan to shelter in place or to evacuate if told to do so. Um, batten down any loose items, and this is what we're talking about on your, in your backyard, on your porch. Uh, we do not need in these heavy winds for lawn furniture to go uh, flying through the air. It could damage property or more importantly, it could uh, hurt someone. Uh, we want you to clear your outdoor storm drains near, the, uh, near your property uh, to prevent flooding during heavy, heavy rains. And when the storm comes, uh, we want you to report blocked drains or downed trees to 311 immediately. That will be very, very helpful and help keep us uh, safe. If you have uh, power outages during the time, uh, the number to call is 877-778-2222 to report any power outages. As well, as we do in every emergency, I ask that you check on uh, the elderly and check on your vulnerable neighbors. Uh, there are many things that uh, if you are able-bodied, you can do it for yourself. Uh, some people do not have that ability, and we need to stand in the gap for them. Uh, I also ask that citizens who live along streams or in places that are subject to flooding, um, I'm especially urging them uh, to move their vehicles to higher ground before the storm arrives. So if you know that you are in a flood-prone uh, area, take the time before tomorrow afternoon and move your car. Uh, yesterday, I ordered that sandbags and uh, sand and sandbags be delivered to strategic locations in Baltimore for residents and businesses to protect their properties. Last night I helped fill sandbags and pass them out to city residents. Uh, sand and sandbags will be available uh, throughout the day at the following locations. Uh, the Broadway Pier at Broadway and Thames, Broadway S Square on the north side, the ESPN Zone as well as Rash Field. I urge anyone who lives close to the water to get some sandbags to help protect their homes from uh, water damage. Again, thank you all for coming, helping to spread the word. Uh, now I'm here, uh, I can take questions as well as my agency heads can take questions. Anybody? Yes? What have you been told about the storm surge up today in the harbor area? Uh, the same thing, it, we're, we get the same information that's been going out, that we anticipate uh, a hit tomorrow afternoon. We won't know until closer what that means. We anticipate at the least very high winds, um, at the most very high winds and very heavy rains. The one thing that is consistent 
uh, across the board, everyone who was uh, preparing for this, uh, this storm, that everyone is preparing uh, for the worst but hoping for the best. One of the things that we uh, intend to do better is making sure that BG&E is working with us on potential power outages. You know, when the power is out, it puts the public safety at risk, and uh, we're going to we're going to be working to improve communications so we can ensure that we're providing safety uh, where those uh, where we have power outages. But the the police office, the police department, uh, you know, we're, we are staffed up. We're ready. Uh, we're on we are on high alert, ready to to jump into action if we need. You. Uh, Hurricane Isabel taught a lot of lessons in mm -hmm. 2003. Uh, based on what you learned then, what have you done this time around to um, prepare? You can do that. Yeah. Can you do that? Say and spell your name, Bob. <laughs> Bob Maloney, M-A-L-O-N-E-Y. I think, I think the difference from Isabel is that the storm surge modeling is much better. I think we we uh, in advance know what those levels are going to be uh, much sooner and so where with Isabel uh, we expected a lot of rain and uh, some wind we didn't get as much rain we got some wind but the storm surge from the northern quadrant came back around and pushed the water up into the bay and a lot of that was not predictable and now I believe that the, with the National Weather Service and their models uh, that will be more predictable and it gives us a better heads up. What, what are you um what are you anticipating? Well, uh, right now the models are showing, you know, two to three feet above a norm, but uh, it's a it's a fuller moon. We know, and and uh, you know, we also know that those models are are not a high probability this far out. So I think I think the mayor's right. What we're doing is is preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, and that's why we're going to have people move their cars in advance, and and that's why. Um, you know, the mayor said sandbags. Was, was Isabel, what was the level at Isabel? Isabel was uh, an eight to nine foot uh, storm surge. And before, uh, since Isabel, we've had some five or sixes. But anything in the eight, nine range, uh, you know, that's when the harbor is going to, in all around the area, really uh, come out of its banks. Is there any estimate as to the number of people who might be in serious jeopardy of getting some flooding? Well, uh, the, the flood inundation maps, um, which are online, uh, have a very good, um, I think, modeling of what we could expect with the Category 1, 2, and 3 storm. And um, it's, it's those individuals in those areas that are color-coded around, around the harbor. We, we prepare, we respond, and then we recover. Uh, right now we're in the prepare phase, and that's why it's so important, again, and I appreciate everyone being here, because we're prepared. We do the training exercises, but you know, ordinary citizens don't have Bob Maloney at home. You know, they're not doing the proper. They're, they don't do the training that we do. So we're prepared. The, the the thing that that it's important is for you to to right now today before uh, the wind starts, before the rain starts, get yourself ready. We have the sand. Uh, if you don't have a flashlight, get it. If you don't have a, a a radio, get it. Charge up your cell phone. Gas up your car. Move it if you need to. We can respond better when we work in partnership. So today is about getting prepared. This is for folks for moving their cars mm -hmm. okay. in those areas, um, in, the, in the light purple area especially, mm -hmm. right? Yes. In the blizzards, you made available city garages. Um, city you garages. Plan to give, place a, yeah. give folks a place to put them? Yes. Uh, city garages will be available, uh, Little Italy, um, Lot O, if you live in uh, South Baltimore, Lot O at M&T uh, Bank is available. And um, there's one in Edison Harbor Lot. East, Edison Lot in Harbor East, right? That's okay. the other one. The one at Eden and yeah. yeah, they will be available free of charge uh, to... Yours. Yes, Ex <laughs> except for your car. <laughs> car I'm just teasing, I'm just teasing. is in the shop because oh, I was caught in flash flood on Sunday. Oh. Oh. That uh -oh. stinks. And I just called the shop and said, you know what, you're in Hampton, keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so those are going to be um, free. And, and now that you mention it, um, just a heads up, if we need to, um, if, if, if things get worse um, and uh, you, people, a lot of people are out on vacation and they're not around to move their car, we'll have plans for that as well. So stay tuned. If you're not signed up to get our uh, 
the city's uh, messages that go out get signed up. This is going to be when you need it because we will be pushing out information on a regular basis to make sure that everyone stays informed. So there will be forgiveness for no parking zones. No forgiveness. No. If you're in the uh, no parking zones, we'll be moving, and, and it's flood prone, we'll be moving your cars if you're out of town. So if you're seeing this and you're in San Diego, you know, and you can't get here to move your car, it'll, you know, it'll be at the Edison, Edison, right? Edison parking lot. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I'm just giving you. You have plenty of options. We're giving you three free lots and time. City lots are free. For the For, yeah, if you live in the impacted areas. Okay. Now, if you're coming out from Baltimore County and just want to hang out in Little Italy for the day, no. I mean, we'll encourage you to do that, but your, your parking's not going to be fair. All righty. Thank you.